Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step one covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step two builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, step three walks you through how to get the best results when entering the arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. All right, let's get into today's step two release. Enjoy. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here again, and I'm going to go over step two of three steps to Gladiator as a Demon Hunter. Make sure you've seen step one of this guide before watching this step. Step two will be about preparing for PvP, which is all about min-maxing your damage as well as certain abilities. It will also go over how to make the most of your crowd control as a demon hunter. When it comes to min-maxing your damage, the first important step is to know your standard rotation and perform it well. Your rotation priority will look like this. Number one, eye beam. Number two, blade dance. Number three, immolation aura. Number four, consume magic for fury. Number five, chaos strike and number six, Demon's Bite. As for burst pressure, it's important that you have enough fury to keep up Immolation Aura so you can continue your normal rotation and fit in two blades whilst Demonic Form is up, which will maximize your burst damage. Then you want to simply dump any leftover fury with Chaos Strikes in between your Blade Dance cooldown. Now that you know how to burst and deal your normal damage, it's important to know the nuances of some of your spells that can be used in order to create outplay potentials or optimize Demon Hunter as much as possible in order to solidify winning games. These spells in question will be Rain From Above, Blade Dance, and Metamorphosis. Rain From Above can be a multi-purpose PvP talent as you could optimize it for both offensive and defensive purposes. For aggression, it's important to use Metamorphosis or Eye Beam in order to proc Demonic Form. This will mean when you use Rain From Above in this form, you gain 25% increased haste, allowing you to get more globals off your damage, increasing your pressure. When it comes to using it defensively, you can simply activate it when you want to avoid melee pressure, flying in the air making you not a target for quite some time. If you're quick to the trigger, you could also activate it to immune yourself from Storm Bolts or any other crowd control effects, thus avoiding an offensive go from the opposition. Be careful though against casters as they can still target and pressure you whilst you're in the air. Blade Dance is one of your highest damaging abilities, but it can also be an incredible way to dodge melee attacks. As soon as you use it, you'll dodge any incoming attacks for 1 second, which is absurdly strong considering it's on a 9 second cooldown itself. Simply tracking enemy stuns with add-ons such as Omnibar, you can mind game your opponents trying to Blade Dance Bash or Kidney Shot in order to avoid potentially a ton of pressure. You can also use it to avoid big damaging abilities such as Sharpen Blade or Rising Sun Kick, which can sometimes happen obnoxiously too. Metamorphosis can also be used for the same reason but better, as it makes you immune to all incoming crowd control such as Stormbow or Polymorph, which Blade Dance doesn't do. So you can use this in order to avoid stuns, crowd control, or even big damage when timed well. You could do it with things like Touch of Death, simply activating Metamorphosis just before Touch of Death ticks and you are immune all the damage from it. We can see Trend utilize Metamorphosis when he's stuck inside a Ring of Frost but wants to keep up on the mage, so he uses Metamorphosis in order to immune himself from being put into a Ring of Frost, allowing him to keep up to the mage. Due to the major trait Chaotic Transformation, you can also chain your dodges from Blade Dance making it difficult for a melee to connect their stun, most likely dodging one of them or simply delaying their stun for too long. You can do this when expecting a stun go on yourself and really want to try and dodge or immune it. After a blade dance usage, 
Simply use Metamorphosis, and if that doesn't immune the stun you're trying to avoid, then you can use your Blade Dance again as a third attempt to try and avoid the stun. You can see Trill pull this technique off, doing Blade Dance into Metamorphosis into another Blade Dance in an attempt to avoid Kidney Shots. Even if he didn't avoid Kidney Shot, he avoided a ton of pressure pulling off this maneuver. Know that this will only be wanted when you are certain that a stun go on yourself could be devastating and want to try and avoid it as best as possible. Now that we've got those nuances of Demon Hunter out of the way, we can move on to the crowd control you have and how to make the most of it. Demon Hunters only have a few crowd control abilities, mainly being Imprison, Feather Eruption, Chaos Nova and Reverse Magic. So the usage of Imprison may depend if you pick up Detainment or not. With Detainment, it can be mainly used as a defensive tool to peel DPS targets. If you see your teammates need help and you want to peel a certain player, imprisoning them with Detainment will stop them in their tracks unable to be dispelled out of it playing with the Detainment. Here, Trill uses Imprison very early on, defensively onto Roasties in order to deny too much pressure overwhelming Seedoo. You could also use it offensively for mana rifts or denying heals if not needing the extra defensiveness from it. This can further your pressure and chained by a stun could lead to the defensive cooldowns from the other team. For mana rifting, if there are non-relentless orcs, you can simply use imprison and mana rift when there's roughly 2.4 seconds left on the imprism. This should ensure that it hits before the healer can escape from it after imprison although it will not work on Mistweavers as they can instantly port out of it if they are in port range. True does this very well as you can see he imprisons the Druid and waits patiently until the right time to get his mana rift off. Hitting him and leaving no guard with no mana left. Now Chaos Nova and Feather Eruption are both stuns that last the same amount of duration. The difference being that Feather Eruption is a shorter cooldown and a single target stun whereas Chaos Nova is twice the cooldown but an AoE stun. As such, they both have the same purpose, using it for high pressure offensive goes, as well as simply ensuring your mana rift to land on the enemy healer. You want to favour the use of Fell Eruption as it's a lower cooldown, and opt for Chaos Nova when you can stun multiple people or in between Fell Eruption usages. You could use your stuns defensively, but only if absolutely necessary. This is because you ideally want to use stuns on enemy healers in order to mana rift, However, if your team is about to lose, then you should stun as appeal in order for them to survive. Saying that, this should be your last resort if unable to live otherwise. Here we can see Seedu put into a Hammer of Justice into a full sap with no defensive cooldowns on the side of Trill. So he opts to use a defensive fell eruption denying Roasties from landing a kidney shot which could have otherwise been devastating for Trill if they got off the pressure they wanted. Although Reverse Magic is not crowd control itself, it can be used that way when playing against certain classes. As stated in the first step guide, you want to take it against Shadow Priests, Hunters, Paladins and Mages. This is because you can reverse long crowd control abilities that would otherwise harm you and can lead to other defensive cooldowns needing to be used. Simply being in range with your healer in a magic crowd control like Trap, Hammer of Justice, Silence or Polymorph and using Reverse Magic when that crowd control lands will simply take your healer out of it and reverse that spell onto the caster. So against a hunter team, you will ideally want to use reverse magic on a full trap. Trend seeing this gets to his healer as soon as possible and uses reverse magic to get his healer out of trap. This stops the enemy's teams, pressuring them too highly and also puts the hunter in his own trap. Other teams may have multiple magic crowd control abilities that may need you to wait and think for using your reverse magic. Against Rogue Mage Paddy for instance, you could use it on Hammer of Justice or Polymorph depending on the situation. In another instance, whilst Trill is in a defensive pursuit, Trill is away from pressure knowing he can live the Hammer of Justice duration onto Seedu, thus saving reverse magic for the full sheep which will allow Seedu to top him off. You mainly want to use this for the above crowd control mentioned and the earlier the better. You also don't want to use it on diminished crowd control as it probably won't be needed but if it is then that would be a team call to make. Using reverse magic in this way is perfect for counter pressuring and will also force the enemy teams to think twice when pushing in for crowd control on your healer. And that's the second step of 3 steps to gladiator as a demon hunter. 
Feel free to leave any questions or comments down below and I'll see you on the next guide.